Hello everyone, so today I'll be looking at the multi-store model of memory. I'll be following along with the AQA Psychology for A-Level Year 1 and AS textbook with the green-haired girl on. So as always, this is the things you need to know and be able to recognise. So I've included your specification point. This is the multi-store model of memory, sensory register, short-term memory and long-term memory. Features of each store, coding, capacity and duration. Now, if you get a long question on this in terms of 16 marks or a 12 marker, you can draw the diagram in an essay style question, but you need to describe it to get marks. And it's not just enough to draw it and move on and think that that could be your AO1 marks because it won't get you. It will get you maybe one. You would need to explain it in your own words. It can be there to help you. And also the multi-store model can be shortened to MSM in an essay, but you would need to mention multi-store model first so that the examiner knows what you're talking about. Don't just dive in with MSM, and that applies to short-term memory and long-term memory also. So it has three main stores, which are your sensor register, short-term memory, and long-term memory. So the multi-store model was put forward by Atkinson and Sifrin in 1968. So the important parts are that you've got this environmental stimuli that enters your sensory register. Once it's got into your sensory register, you must then pay attention for it to go into your short term memory and for it to go into the long term memory, it has to transfer. And once something's in your long term memory to get it back into your short term memory, you have to retrieve it and to keep something in your short term memory, you have to rehearse it. That is the basics of this model. The arrows coming down are just a bit of extra information for you. So in terms of the sensory register, if the information is not attended to, it is lost by decay. So that's where it fades away over time. With your short term memory, information is lost through forgetting if it is not rehearsed. And for long term memory, information is lost through forgetting. So it just decays over time. So your sensory register in a bit more detail. You'll notice I've got an eye and an ear at the top there. So your eye relates to the iconic store and the ear relates to the echoic store. I remember echoic store being the ear because e an ear, an echo, you hear echoes through your ear. Iconic eye is an eye. So sensory register, we're looking at a stimulus from the environment which passes to that sensory register. So it might be that someone calls your name and that goes to your sensory register but at the same time smells sights are going along with that and the store has several parts so it has one for each of our sensors and what we're going to look at is the two main stores which is that iconic and echoic memory so your iconic memory is the visual information which is coded visually and your echoic memory is your sound or auditory information which is coded acoustically so the duration of the central register is very, very brief. So it's less than half a second. And the central registers have a high capacity. So 100 million cells in one eye there is. And very little of what's actually in your central register passes on further to the memory system. But if you pay attention, it will pass on. And then you have your short term memory. So this is a limited capacity store. So it only contains a certain number of things before forgetting takes place. Remember your capacity. We're looking at that magic number seven, which is your seven plus or minus two items that can be stored there. But research does suggest it's more likely to be five than seven. Information in your short term memory is coded acoustically. It lasts about 30 seconds unless you rehearse it. And there's this thing called maintenance rehearsal, which occurs when we repeat material to ourselves over and over. And what the model argues is that if we rehearse it for long enough, it passes on to long term memory. Then we have our long term memory. Now researchers think this is potentially permanent. So the capacity is unlimited. And we can think of the example of Barrick et al, their study, in terms of the face recognition, which was still very good after 50 years with the school photo books. So long term memory tends to be coded semantically. So that's by meaning. And when we want to recall it, it has to transfer back to short term memory in a process called retrieval. Keep looking at the diagram with this because it shows you that it has to transfer back. 
And according to the multi-store model, all memories must transfer back from long-term memory. None are directly recalled from long-term memory itself. So I've just included two case studies here. So we've got KF and then we'll look at HM, which you can use in your evaluation for this model. So KF was studied by Charlotte and Warrington in 1970. KF suffered brain damage from a motorcycle accident. So this damaged his short term memory, but left his long term memory intact. And it shows that short term memory and long term memory are separate stores and they work independently. If one store is damaged, it doesn't mean that the other store will be. And then we have HM, which was studied by Scoville and Milner in 1957. So HM's brain damage was caused by an operation to remove his hippocampus from both sides of his brain to reduce the severe epilepsy he suffered. So you look at the diagram on the right hand side, you can see the hippocampus is pointing to that blue bit and it curves round. So that's what they removed. So what happened was HM's personality and intellect remained, but he couldn't form new long term memories. He could remember things from before the operation, but anything new he couldn't remember. So this case study, HM, supports the idea that the hippocampus plays a vital role in long term memory and that it may act as a memory gateway through which new memories must pass before permanent storage in the brain. So we'll now look at evaluation. So we have supporting research evidence. So the multi-store model is supported by research studies that show short term memory and long term memory are different. They're separate things. So Badley's study on coding found that we mix up words that sound similar when we're using short term memory and we mix up words that have similar meanings in long term memory. So that study is to do with the coding, if you can remember that one. So we found that Coding in short term memory is acoustic and coding in long term memory is semantic. So we have that evidence that there is these separate stores. So two stores are different, which supports the multi store model as these two processes are independent of one another. So the limitation is that the multi store model states that short term memory is a unitary store and that's it. But actually, we have evidence that there is more than one type of short term memory. So we need to think of KF here. So this is your motorcycle accident person. So remember also that you can be critical when we talk about case studies because they have limitations in terms of generalizing. So KF's short term memory for digits was poor when they were read out loud, but his recall was much better when he read them to himself. So there we can tell there that there is different short term memory stores. So the unitary store is a limitation because research suggests that there must be at least a short term store for visual information and one for auditory information. And here we can apply the working memory model that was put forward by Badley and Hitch 1974. You can use the phonological loop here and the visual spatial sketch pad. So further limitations that the multi store model suggests that the more rehearsal you do, the more likely you are to transfer it to long term memory and remember it. But what Craig and Watkins say in 1973 is different. They argue that there's more than one type of rehearsal. So this is a limitation of the multi store model, which says there is just this one. So they put forward maintenance rehearsal, which is the type described in the multi store model. But they say it doesn't transfer it uh, and it just maintains it in that short term memory. Instead, something called elaborative rehearsal is present. So this is where you link new information with something in your existing knowledge. And that is how the long term memory works from short term memory. And the multi store model cannot explain this elaborative rehearsal. So this is a limitation of it. We can also say that artificial materials are not very useful. So a lot of the studies that we use when we look at the multi store model include very artificial things. So we look at digits, letters and even just single words. But in everyday life, we look at people's faces. We have to learn their names, facts, places of things. And so when we do research studies, even so, we're looking at 
consonant syllables even such as z l g which have no meaning to anyone so it means well the multisyllable model surely can't be that great of an explanation for how memory works in everyday life because they're not testing things like people's faces and names and facts so what we should do instead really is use everyday pictures of people's faces but then when we think of that it actually is a problem because the experimenter loses control over variables so a further limitation is that there is more than one type of long-term memory. So in the multi-store model, it suggests that long-term memory is a unitary store. But we know this isn't true because of Tolvin. He says that there's semantic, episodic and procedural. So we know the different types, but the multi-store model suggests that all these different types of information, so how you ride a bicycle, your facts you have about the world and what happened on your last birthday, they argue that it's all stored in the same way in the multi-store model, and that's via maintenance rehearsal. But this finding that there are different kinds of information undermines long-term memory in this model. Okay, so I've had a look through the past papers and I found this question from an AS paper one from June 2016. So it says, outline what psychological research has shown about short-term memory according to the Mordi-Store model of memory. For four marks, this is all AO1 descriptive because you have got your outline, your command word there, hinting towards that description. Now, this particular question is what research has shown and also it wants you to look at specifically the short-term memory aspect within the Mordi-Store model. So if we just have a look at the mark scheme, we can see under content, it talks about capacity, duration and coding of short term memory and what we have found, what's been shown in research and make sure you're linking it to that multi-store model of memory. We've also got the bottom credit other relevant material. So you can also talk about ways of forgetting from short term memory, for example, displacement, which we have mentioned. OK, thank you for listening and best of luck with the rest of your revision.